So in this video I'm going to show you how to create this beautiful and interactive game menu inside of Unity from scratch with all these animations. So yeah, let's get started. So here we will start with a new and empty Unity scene and try recreating this menu like this from Angry Birds with all these functionality and everything. So let's head back inside of Unity and here I have got this awesome UI pack from Asset Space which is basically our own assets website here. And here you can see this game UI buttons pack, click on this and you can download this pack for free. So click on this button here and the link is in the description if you want to check it out. And there are tons of other icons pack and assets available for free. And with that said, now let's head back inside of Unity. So the first thing we want to do is to create a canvas here. So right click, UI, go to canvas, select canvas. So firstly we can change the render mode and there are three render modes here from screen space, overlay and world space. So we will be sticking with this camera and drag and drop our main camera inside of this render camera. Alright and enable this pixel perfect. Now you can see the canvas fits the screen size of our camera. Alright so it brings us to canvas scaler here. So here we will select scale with screen size. And here put in the resolution that you are working on. So I'm working on 1920 by 1080. So this resolution here, you can change this if you want. And also let's change this match to 0.5. So it scales correctly with both the width and the height of the game. So once we are done, it's time to create a background image for the game. And let's call this background image. And we will set the anchor preset to this one so it matches the size of the screen. Cool. And I'm gonna import this picture here, you can use it whatever you want, but I'm gonna use this one for the background here. So let's drag and drop this in. This looks good. And now let's add some title to our game. So you are text here and call it title. So let's first go to the anchor presets and select this one here. And let's change the height to let's say 300. Let's reset the anchor presets back. Alright. So now we can just change the text here. And as we are recreating Angry Birds, so I'm gonna name it as Happy Birds. And also let's go down and increase the size of the text here. Select best fit and increase the max size. But first let's change the alignment to center. And now we can just drag this up. So this looks good. And I'm gonna change the font. And I have imported these fonts here. You can use whatever fonts you want. So I'm gonna go for this one. And let's increase the max size a bit. Alright, this looks good. And now it's time to add some buttons. So go to UI and select button here. And for this, I'm gonna replace the sprite with this one. So this play button here. Just drag and drop this in. And change the width to 300 and also the height to 300. So let's get rid of this text here. But it kind of looks odd. So here we will select the preserve aspect here. And it will bring it back to its original aspect ratio. And now we don't need to change anything else here. So let's go ahead and create some more buttons like this. So let's first rename this to play button. And duplicate this. So control D and let me just quickly add some more buttons to the scene.
white and chain these parts cool so once we are done with the buttons we can just go ahead and play this out so yeah it does look good but still it is kind of dead so let's add some animations to our buttons starting with this one here let's exit play mode select the play button let's first increase the text size a bit something like this and now let's push the play button a bit down somewhere around here it looks good all right so now let's select the play button so we can add some animations to it so let's open up canvas play button and change the transition type to animation here and select this auto generate animations all right now we have to select a folder so let me create a new one here call it animations and we can just store all the animations in here all right so it's all in here and now we can open up our animation tab and here you can see all the animations so we will be making the highlighted animation so when we hover over the play button we want it to animate so let's hit this red button here so it will start recording and we can just change the size so let's set it to 400 both width and height and that's all we need to do here let's try this out and indeed it is working and it looks kind of cool so now it's time to add animation to our settings button and for this one we're gonna make a pop-up animation something like this so when we click on this the panel will pop up so select the settings button but we are not gonna create animations inside of this so let's create a panel first and let's change the size let's make it smaller something like this and let's change its position and place it behind the settings button so let's set the anchor preset to this one and also change the color a bit and now we can place it behind the buttons here all right and also change the position x position to 120 so it fits behind the button correctly and drag it up something around here and also reduce the width so that it hides behind the settings button just like this one here So let's reduce the width a bit more and now it looks good so let's add some buttons to our panel here duplicate this and drag and drop this inside the panel all right change this to music and now reset the transform here so we can see it and here it is so we need to change the width and height a bit so let's make it 130 by 130 here and let's change the sprite here so let's select the music this one and now let's change the anchor preset to this one here so top center so let's drag this up a bit to make room for another button here so let's duplicate this and drag this down a bit something around here so yeah that's look good let's name this sfx and we can drag them up a bit so let's like both of them and drag them up something like this looks good all right so let me show you how we're gonna create this panel animation if we select the panel and if we try to drag this down it looks like it's hiding behind the settings button and it pops up again so let's animate this select the panel and go to animation tab and create 
the idle animation first. So name it idle and we don't have to change anything here so let's create another one create a new clip let's call this pop-up hit save and now we can animate this so for this we want the panel to be hidden behind the settings something like this and also the buttons should be disabled so let's select both of them and disable them and now we can just start recording so at the end of this animation here we can just drag the panel to something like this I'll set this to 400 alright as you can see it looks good so now we can just animate the buttons here so for them let's go a bit big somewhere around here and we can select the first one and enable this all right let's move ahead and somewhere on here now let's get a big pick and now we can enable this one all right so now if we play the animation out yeah it looks good so let's just disable the record mode and now we can just play this out so yeah it looks good so once we are done with the pop-up animation we can create the pop down so create a new clip call it pop down and for this one here we have to have the panel already open so at the start here we will set this to 400 and also let's enable both of these buttons here all right and now let's get to the end of this clip and drag the panel down something like this cool and now we can just animate the buttons so let's go back and somewhere around here we can set the first button which gets it behind the settings we can disable this here and for the next one somewhere around here we can disable this too all right so now we are done with this pop down animation so disable the recording and hit play it looks good all right so we are done with the pop up and pop down animation for this panel here so now let's open up the animator window and i'll place them like this so let me just quickly do it okay now we can make transition from idle to pop up and then from pop up to pop down and then back to idle all right something like this so for these we need a condition here so let's make a trigger for these hit plus trigger and we can call this pop all right so to go from idle to pop up we need to select this transition line and we need to disable this has exit time and instead make a condition here which will be the pop trigger and now it will just go from idle to pop up when this trigger is enabled now let's go to the settings and here we can change the transition duration to 0.1 all right now for this one here from pop up to pop down select this and also disable this has exit time and this transition duration to 0.1 and add the condition here and now lastly from pop down to idle so for this we don't need to make any condition so we will just leave this has exit time enabled so when this ends it will go back to the idle state all right so we are done with this now let's get back to our game and let's go to our animations now so select both of them and disable this loop time here make sure you do that and now we can add some script to manage all this so let's go to canvas and create a menu manager script all right so let's open this up inside of visual studio now so firstly let's let's make a new function here 
and we will call this settings and up here let's make a reference for our panel game object so game object and let's call this panel and inside of this method here we will get the animator component attached to this panel and we will enable the pop trigger here alright so let's head back inside of unity select the canvas and drag and drop our panel inside of this slot here and let's just first put the animator window here so we can see what's actually going on alright now let's select the settings button the settings button here and add an on click event to this so let's drag and drop the canvas and the settings method here and we can just try this out now so let's click this and as you can see the menu pops up and here it shows the pop-up state and if we click on this it goes down and now it's in the idle state so let's maximize this and we can also interact with these buttons here but they do nothing for now so yeah now the menu feels much more alive so now let's make this button able to open websites for us so let me just change this back first i'll put my scene view here and the animator tab back all right and now we can just open up the menu manager script and let's create a new function here public void and let's call this open site because it will be opening websites for us so here we will type in application dot open url and inside of this we can pass in the url here so i'm gonna pass this one so when this is called it will open up this website awesome so now let's head back inside of unit select the share button here and add an on click event let's drag and drop this canvas and find the open side method here alright let's test this out and if we click on this and indeed it works so it open up the website so yeah everything's working just fine so now we can just go back inside of unity and you could go ahead and animate all these buttons like we did with this one and the only thing left here is to add some music to our game so let's quickly add some music make sure you enable this play on awake and this loop here and i'll import this music let's drag and drop this here make sure these are active so now let's test this out so yeah the menu feels more much more alive you could also disable the music with these buttons if you want so yeah that's it for this video i hope you enjoyed this and if you did please subscribe to my youtube channel and if you have any questions just leave them down in the comment section until next time see ya yeah.